When I was seven years old, my hero was Harriet the Spy. I'd read the book, seen the movie, and to me, Harriet the Spy was exactly who I wanted to be. Now, if you haven't read the book or seen the Nickelodeon movie with Michelle Trachtenberg, let me get you up to speed. Harriet is a precocious young girl whose main hobby is walking around her neighborhood with a composition notebook and pencil in hand, ducking behind parked cars, observing the locals. She documents couples arguing, a vegetable thief, a jazz-loving cat owner, and even her own classmates. She's not solving crimes exactly, but is more so just committed to the careful observation of human behavior and the world around her. At seven, I tried my best to emulate Harriet the Spy, convincing my parents to buy me a black and white composition notebook, a combination magnifying glass binocular contraption from the nature store at the mall, and even adopted some of Harriet's color-blocking fashion sense. I'd walk around our quiet suburban neighborhood after school and on weekends, looking around for anything unusual, anything out of place, anything of interest. On the Google Maps design team, we employ a number of methods to gather insights to make the best products that we can. These research methods fall into three buckets, foundational, iterative, and evaluative, and they roughly align with the stages of the product development process. Foundational research is all about understanding who our users are, what their needs are, and if we have opportunities to meet those needs. For foundational research, we might do something like a contextual inquiry or a literature review. Iterative research is all about understanding if what we're designing is useful, usable, and resonates with people. For this, we might do things like a cognitive walkthrough or an in-lab usability study. Evaluative research is all about understanding if what we've put out into the world is successful or if there are things that we could change or improve. For this, we might do things like a happiness survey or a diary study after we've launched a product or feature. I want to walk you through a few examples of how we use these methods throughout the product development process across Google Maps. Several years ago, the Google Earth team set out to refresh the overall look and feel of this much-loved product and introduce new features for a user group that finds the product particularly useful in their daily work, school teachers. However, none of us on the Google Earth team were school teachers, so we needed to talk to people who were in order to uncover their unique needs. We interviewed school teachers about how they structure their lessons and what challenges they face. We asked them if they could wave a magic wand, what would they want the ability to do with Google Earth? From the initial interviews, we got a clear sense that teachers very much wanted the ability for them and their students to create interactive, map-based stories atop the Earth imagery to go deeper on subjects they were covering in class, like endangered animals, butterfly migrations, and ancient temples. Taking this, my product manager and I set up a co-design workshop in which we gave teachers tools to design their ideal map-based stories. They came up with some brilliant ideas, many of which made it into the final product. In both the initial interviews and the co-design workshop, we gathered rich insights that we never would have uncovered had we just been thinking hard at our desks. But what if you're introducing something completely new and unfamiliar to people? Back in 2016, I joined a small team that was just starting to play around with the idea of putting augmented reality, or AR, in Google Maps. We had some vague initial ideas of how this might work, but most Google Maps users were really unfamiliar with AR, and we wanted to make sure we were solving real user problems and not just introducing AR for AR's sake. Looking at past research on pedestrian navigation, we had a hypothesis that AR could probably help users get oriented faster and have greater confidence along their navigation journey. But we wanted to know more. My UX research teammate and I decided to conduct contextual inquiry studies to better understand how people orient and navigate. We walked with people. We watched as people squinted at the blue dot on the map, as they checked and double-checked upcoming turns, as they got disoriented at complicated intersections, and as they struggled to find the entrance to their destination. In doing this, we found that many people grapple with map abstraction. For lots of folks, it's hard and sometimes even anxiety-inducing to quickly understand the relationship between what they're seeing in the real world and what's on the 2D map. 
And this disconnect is particularly exaggerated at the beginning of the walking journey, when they're just trying to head in the right direction. This orientation problem is precisely what we've solved with LiveView, our name now for AR and Google Maps. Honing in to this major pain point and leveraging the strengths of AR by literally placing 3D arrows in the camera view and collaborating with engineering as they developed a new technical approach simply wouldn't have happened if we hadn't have walked over 100 miles alongside people in San Francisco, New York, Zurich, and Tokyo. Having co-design workshops and walking side by side people sounds great, but what if you're living in 2020 and that type of research simply isn't possible? And how do you design helpful solutions in a world that's so rapidly changing like it has been this year? In mid-March, my coworkers and I, like many of you, started working from home. There were no more walks with user study participants, no more trips to cities abroad, no more in-person lab studies. Suddenly, we were all forced to grapple with the gut-wrenching changes that COVID-19 had brought about. For many of us, this put our local communities into sharp focus. The shops and restaurants that normally made up the vibrant fabric of urban life were shuttered. Across the globe, members of the Google Maps team started noticing people ordering food or buying gift certificates from their favorite restaurants to support these small businesses. Seeing this, members of the Google Maps team rallied around the idea of making it easier for people to support the small businesses that they loved by surfacing this feature, which highlights things like the ability to buy a gift card or donate via PayPal. The Google Maps team also worked quickly with merchants to help them designate whether they were offering things like curbside pickup, contactless delivery, or dine-in ultimately making it much easier for people to understand how they could get food safely. Over the past few months, team members additionally saw a surge in online searches for Black-owned businesses and observed in their own communities a strong desire to support Black-owned businesses. To support this desire, the team rolled out in July the ability for business owners in the U.S. with a verified business profile on Google to add a Black-owned business attribute to their profile, making it easier for people to find them on Google Search and Maps. Taking the time to listen, empathize, and develop a foundational understanding of human behavior might seem unnecessarily slow or like a potential waste of energy. But in this era of snap judgments, intentionally taking a beat and allowing yourself to look around and learn in the design process ensures that we are designing the right thing before we decide how the details will work. This ultimately saves time, money, and leads to better products. All those years ago, when I was pretending to be Harriet the Spy, I didn't realize that I was practicing the same manner of observation and synthesis that I use today as a designer. Back then, I was just recognizing my curiosity and following it down whatever path it took me. Today, I want to encourage us all to maybe act a little bit more like Harriet. To slow down and pay close attention to our own personal curiosities. To take notes on the complexities around us and turn those insights into helpful ideas, conversations, or products. Your neighborhood can be a laboratory if you let it. And your creative process can start simply with a composition notebook, a pencil, and a walk outside. Thank you.